For your life, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he noticed two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me as my disciples, accepting me as your master and teacher, and walk in the same path of life that I walk, and I will make you fishers of men. I've read you Matthew 4, 17 through 19. May the Lord have a blessing on the reader and the hearer of his word. May we go to our God in prayer. Dear most gracious and eternal Father, Lord, we just come today, God, another Sunday, God, to worship and to bless your name, God, and to simply tell you thank you, God. Thank you for being our healer, God. Thank you for being our savior, God. Thank you for being all-knowing, God, all-seeing, God. Thank you for loving us, God, unconditionally, God. Thank you, God, that you hold all power in your hands, God. Thank you, God, hallelujah, that you are our deliverer and our redeemer, God, hallelujah. Thank you, God, that you have saved us from the hand of the enemy, God. Thank you, God, that we can come, God, into your presence, God, to freely worship God, to freely bless God, to freely exalt your wonderful name, God. We're coming to celebrate you, God, because you are the reason why we're here, God. You are the reason why we're celebrating four years of ministry, God. You are the reason, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for the vision, God. We thank you, God, for the visionary, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, hallelujah, for the people, God, that we've encountered, God, for the last four years in this ministry, God. We ask you, God, continue, God, to keep us, God, in your will, God, and in your way, God. Continue, God, and remind us that our mind, God, should be fixed on you, God. Yes. Clean us up, God. Hallelujah. Remove anything, God, that's not like you, God. Hallelujah. We didn't come from dictatorship, God, or spectatorship, God. We came to bless God, to magnify God, to worship God, to exalt God, your holy and wonderful name, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for every visitor, God, here in this community, God. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus, God. Whatever the needs are, God, we see you, God, to meet the need, God. We see you, God, to meet beyond the need, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. For every vendor in the place, God. We thank you for every gift, God, in the place, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for our pastor, God, the shepherd of this great flock, God. We ask you to touch them right now in the name of Jesus, God. We lift them up to you, God. Pour out your spirit, God. Pour out your power, God. Pour out your anointing on him right now in the name of Jesus, God. Thank you for the one that stands beside him, God. Thank you for the one that holds him up, God. Thank you for the family that surrounds him with love, God. Hallelujah. We ask you, God, to just bless, God. Every minstrel, God. Every minister, God. Every musician, God. Every usher, God. Every media person, God. Every lay person that makes up this great church, God. We thank you, God, for their lives, God. We thank you for the love, God. We thank you for the peace, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the word, God, that's already went forth, God. And we thank you for the word, God, that you saw fit, God, for us to receive in our hearts today, God. We love you, God. Hallelujah. Today's going to be a celebration, God. Hallelujah. Someone's going to be saved, healed, and delivered, God, in this service, God. We thank you in advance, God, for what you're going to do, God. We love you, God, and we bless your name, God. These and all of the things we ask in our darling son, Jesus' name, we pray and we thank God. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. This is how I fight my 
This is how I fight my battle. Where are my fighters and my warriors? Come on, come on, come on. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle.
Thank you. I said, come on, let's tell the Lord thank you. I heard one amen or thank you out there. I said, our God is worthy to be praised. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you're going through. He's worthy of our praise. And so today, again, we thank God again for all that he's done, all that he promises to do. And it's that time of day again when we come and we offer Christ. We want to preach a word just for a few moments today. It's our fourth anniversary, and we dare not take this opportunity for granted. We wanted to have a festival. We wanted, again, to love on the community, but we also want to give the best love that we can give, the greatest love we can give, and that is to offer Christ. And so today, I, I want to just... I offer up a text and preach to you just for a few moments. If y'all help me, I promise I'll get out the way and we can eat some more hot dogs and some chips and we can play and have some games. Give me one second. you have your devices, you have your phones or your Bible, you brought it to the festival. Turn with me to Mark chapter 11, beginning with verse 12. Very familiar passage of scripture. Simply says, the next morning as they were leaving Bethlehem, or Bethany rather, verse 12, Jesus was hungry. He noticed the fig tree and full leaf a little way off. So he went over to see if he could find any figs, but there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for fruit. Then Jesus said to the tree, may no one ever eat your fruit again. And the disciples heard him. Skip down to verse 20. It says, the next morning as they passed by the fig tree, 
he had cursed the disciples notice it had withered from the roots up and Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day and exclaimed look rabbi the fig tree you curse has withered and died then Jesus said to the disciples have faith in God somebody say have faith in God I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything and if you believe that, you will receive it. It will be yours. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Just for a few moments this morning, time that is ours, I want to preach from the subject, believe for it. Somebody say believe for it. Believe for it. Believe for it. Say it like you really mean it. Believe for it. Now look at your neighbor and say believe for it. Believe for it. Listen, throughout the Bible, we read about men and women of faith who have believed God who have believed what he said. In spite of their circumstances, they believed that God was able to do what he said he would do. Here in our text, Jesus has once again shown his authority and power, this time through nature. Jesus curses a fig tree, and in 24 hours, the tree dries up. He does not chop it down. He does not spray chemicals on it. He simply speaks with authority a word that changes the course of the life of this tree. Peter, one of the beloved disciples, one of the leaders of disciples, is amazed and astonished at what has happened. Jesus uses this moment of amazement to teach Peter and to teach us the kingdom authority available to us when we have faith in God. I'll say that one more time. There's a kingdom authority available to us when we have faith in God. That, that simply means when we believe for it. Today, God would have me to remind someone, someone who is facing an incredible challenge. Someone who's facing a mountainous situation. Someone who is facing what appears to be an insurmountable problem. Someone who is worried about who's going to be our next president. I hear God saying, just believe for it. Believe for your healing. Believe for your deliverance. Believe for your breakthrough. Believe for a turnaround. Believe for God to do just what he said he would do. Amen. Oh, I know what the doctor has said. I know what the lawyer may have said. I know what they said. Uh, 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 you will never be normal again. I know they said no one will overcome this. I know what they said. But you've got to believe God is what God is saying concerning you. Amen. Listen, Jesus, Jesus said, have faith in God. And that's the first point that I want to make this morning. I'm going to get out your way. Have faith in God. If you're going to believe for it, you got to have faith in God. Tell your neighbor, you got to have faith in God. Not in your bank account, not in your friends, not in mama, not daddy, not in your boo, your babe. You got to have faith in God. Not in what you know, not in who you know, not in what you possess, not in what the majority says, not in the data and the research says, not in what the political pundits and our analysts think. You've got to put your faith in the God who controls everything. The one who created everything. The one who created the heavens and the earth. The one whose spirit moved upon the waters, formed the earth and the sea. The one who said, let there be light and there was light. The one who hung the moon and the sun in the place. The one who flung the stars into the ebony sky. The one who looked, who took from the dust of the earth, rather, and formed man and breathed into his nostril. Man became a living soul. Yeah, you got to have faith Amen. in the God who created you, Amen. who formed you in your mother's belly, Amen. and who knows everything there is to know about you. Believe for it. Have faith in God. Our God is bigger than your issues. Amen. Our God is bigger than your problems. Our God is more powerful than any nation on the earth. Our, our God is bigger than any ruler. He reigns. He's supreme. 
He's God all by himself. He can take a little and make much. He can take the weak, make them strong and powerful. There is nothing that our God cannot do. Secondly, you got to speak the word. To use this tongue that we often use for the wrong reasons. He's given us the authority to speak in faith over whatever it is we are believing for. You got to speak it. Tell your neighbor, you got to speak it. The word of God is quick. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing the son of soul and spirit and the joint of marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Yes, speak it with authority. He knows your heart. He knows your intent. He knows what you mean. He you not be able to you won't. God knows what you're thinking and what's in your heart, but you got to say, God, take control. Speak it with authority. Jesus says in our text, if you have faith in God and say to these mountains, move to the sea, it shall come to pass. Jesus was speaking of the Mount of Olives near Bethany. But maybe you you, you need the, the, the Mount of Sickness removed. You, you don't have a Mount of Olives, but, but maybe you got a Mount of Sickness. Maybe you got a amount of debt that you don't know how you're going to pay it. Maybe you got a, a, a amount of depression, amount of brokenness, amount of loneliness, Amen. amount of unforgiveness. Amen. Whatever your amount is, you ought to believe for it. Speak to it and it shall come to pass. In this text, Jesus once again shows the believer how to operate in the kingdom of God. I'm going to get out your way. I promise you, just give me a few more minutes. The kingdom of God is not a natural kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. Who's reigning over your life? right now who's the god over your life right now who's sitting on the throne of your life right now who is it that you listen to who is it that's ruling you right now mark tells us that the kingdom of god is the spiritual kingdom therefore we cannot operate in a natural man or woman in the kingdom of god and so that leads me to my third point that if we are to believe god to do the supernatural to work a miracle in our life anybody need a miracle in their life we must operate in the spiritual. In the spiritual realm, in the kingdom of God, there are conditions and clauses that the believer must adhere to. In our text, Jesus places some conditions and clauses that we must adhere to in order for those things that we desire to come to pass. Listen, it's right there in verse 23. It says, uh, where we find the first condition, it says, Jesus says, For verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, shall not doubt, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Jesus says, Do not doubt. I, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what didn't work before. This time, you got to have faith. You got to believe for it. When we doubt, we're saying, we don't believe you, God. We don't trust you, God. We, we, we don't believe the one who has made us. We don't believe the one who has kept us. We don't believe the one who has delivered us time and time again. Look, I'm looking at some folks right now who look good. I'm looking at some folks who look blessed. And highly favored. And it looks like God has been on your side. Yeah, and if he did it before, don't you know he'll do it again? Yeah. He's brought you yeah. through it all. Yeah. He's brought you through it all. Yeah. And so when Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water to Jesus, he, he you, you do remember that story when he was walking on the water? He was fine as long as he kept his faith in Jesus. But when he started thinking about what he was doing and that's our problem. Sometimes we start thinking about what we are doing and not what God is doing. God is in control. And when he's in control, you got to take your hand off of it and just walk in faith trusting and believing what he has said. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I want you to know uh, that God wants you to believe for it. James 1, 2, 8 says, my brother encountered all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing that, that the trying of your faith is simply working patience. But let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, no doubting, for he that waver is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man, a doubting man is unstable in all his ways. Tell your neighbor, believe for it. Verse 25, our text is where we find another condition and clause. Jesus says, and when you stand praying, forgive. I didn't get a whole lot of amens on that one. Forgive. If you have all against others, that your Father also in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Verse 26, he says, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. When we pray, we show our dependence upon God. We recognize that we need him to do for us what no one else can do. But, 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 but here, here, here's, the, here, here's the condition. When you pray, Forgive. Amen. Forgive those who you have ought against. Yeah. Folks who stepped on your toe 20 years ago, you still mad about it. Yeah. Folks who hurt you a long time ago, you still upset about it. Listen, let it go. They, they, they may not have loved you the way that you thought they should love you. Forgive them and move on, knowing again that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. Jesus says, forgive them, give them some grace. Somebody say, give them some grace. Yeah, give them some grace. You want grace, give them some grace. Jesus says, forgive them, give them some grace. Let it go so that you can receive forgiveness by your Father in heaven so that you may receive the grace of God. God's grace looks beyond our faults. God's grace sees all our needs. God's grace provides us an opportunity to get it right with him. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for the grace of God. I'm grateful that God does not give us what we deserve. But he looks beyond our faults and he sees our needs. He gives us grace, unmerited favor, undeserved kindness. Yet yeah, when you recognize that you never would have made it. Somebody say, I never would have made it. I never would have made it if it was not for the grace of God who was on my side. Yeah, he opened up the door for me. He gave me the manifold blessings that I have. First Peter 4 and 10 says, Every man has received the gift. Even so, minister the same one another. Since you got the gift of grace, give the gift of grace. Amen. Be patient with each other. Amen. Songwriter says, For God is not through with me yet. But when he gets through with me, I shall come forth as here go. Believe for it. If you want it, believe for it. I'm going to my seat. No, I believe for it. Moses believed for it. Joshua believed for it. Abraham and Sarah believed for it. Hannah crying, believe for it. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. She believed for it. David believed for it. Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, they believed for it. Zechariah and Elizabeth, they wanted a baby and they believed for it. Mary and Joseph, two teenagers who had a baby, they believed for it. The disciples believed. The woman at the well believed. The woman with the issue of blood believed. You ain't the first one to do it. The man with the demon possessed son believed. The noble man whose son was sick at home believed. Paul and Timothy, they believe. Our ancestors, they believe. Mama and daddy, they believed. I've seen God do it for believers, old and young, who dared to believe for it, who dared to take him at his word. And that's all I came to tell you today. Believe for it. God has the power to bless us and to take care of us no matter who's in the White House, y'all. Are y'all hearing me? We are not dependent 
on a man or a woman or a political party. We have seen God make our enemies our footstools. We've seen God take what was meant for evil and use it for our good. We've seen God bring us through some tough times before y'all. We've seen God shut everything down to remind us who is sitting on the throne. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will. He'll take care of us. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will. He'll take care of us. All that you may need, he will. He'll provide. God will. He'll take care of you. Believe for it. I don't know about you, but I'm going to believe for it. The Clark sister said it this way. I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I feel the intangible. I see the invisible. The sky is the limit of what I can have. Just believe and receive it. God will perform it. He'll do it today. Yes, he will. If you'll believe it for it today, I dare you to ask God. Help me right now. My faith may not be where it needs to be, but he will give you the strength to make it through. Believe for your healing. Believe for your deliverance. Believe for your increase. Believe for your promotion of your job. Believe for your companion, your Boaz, that's on the way. Believe. God will do it. He'll do it for you. Listen, many of you don't know our story. Four years ago, we were in a pandemic. I asked God, what did the pandemic mean? What was he trying to say to us? And I heard God say that you got some unfinished business. I need you to go and lift up this great gospel. I need you to tell the world about me. He says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw them. You don't have to do anything. Just preach the word. Four years ago, I got in my car because we couldn't do nothing else but ride around or walk around. We couldn't go to the movies, couldn't go to the restaurants. All we could do was get in our cars and ride around. And I heard God say again, you got some unfinished business. I grew up in this neighborhood, went to Riverview Middle School. It's called Junior High then. I went to Carver High School. This is my neighborhood. Over 35 years ago, I accepted my call in the ministry. My purpose again then and now was to share this great gospel right here in the hood. God has opened up doors for us because we believed for it. We believed he was going to do something great. We believed he was going to turn things around. And I'm still believing. Listen, this is just this is just one example. This building, the three and a half acres of land was gifted to us four years ago. It was used as down payment on another building that we have on Mallory right now. I don't think y'all heard me. I, I said it, it was given to us so that we could use this for down payment on the building on Mallory. But the vision is here is that this would be a community hub, a community resource. The grounds that you're on right now are going to be Little League peewee football and soccer fields for kids to be able to come into play and to have a safe space. This building would be used to train people, help people get jobs and start their businesses. I'm believing for it. I just need some other people who would dare 
believe for it. Believe for it. Listen, there are dreams, there are aspirations among us right now. There, there are people out there who have all kinds of ideas. You're good with your hands. You're, you're, you're creative. You can do some hair. I said her. You, you, you can work on the engine. You, you can, there, there's nothing that we don't have that God hasn't gifted us with. We just got to believe for it. And I'm believing again that he's going to use Riverview Community Church to be a venue to help. I'm trusting you that you would allow him to use you. Every head bow. If I could get you to just stop whatever you're doing right now. God, we come to you under this open heaven. This beautiful day. We thank you, God, for what you have done and what you are doing. God, we are believing for it. We're believing for it. We're believing you. That the problems that we may see in our lives right now, that they are really mountains that are helping us again to get to the next level. They're not sent to harm us or destroy us, but they're simply to make us stronger. And so God, I pray right now for my sister and my brother who may need a, a financial blessing, who may need a healing in their body, who may need transforming in their thinking, God. I pray right now for that mother who's worried about their children, God, and worried about their son, those who have gone astray. I pray right now, God, that today you'll turn it around. You'll increase their faith and you'll help them to believe for it. Believe that your child is going to grow up. Believe that he's going to turn it around. Believe that they're going to graduate from high school. Go on to trade school or college. Whatever it is they've dreamed of being. God, I pray right now that you bless us. All of those in the sound of my voice, whatever the need is, God, I pray right now you meet them at the point of need. Do it right now, God. God, but more importantly, I pray again for those who don't have you in their lives. Those who have yet to accept you as Lord and Savior. God, I right now pray that you would help them to believe you. That you did send your darling son, Jesus. That he did die on the cross. That he did uh, get up out of the grave with all power in his hands. The same power that allows us right now to turn it around help them right now God to make a conscious decision to give their life to you to follow you for the rest of their life God all of their days bless them right now God as they give their heart to you God I pray again they make a conscious decision that they'll never ever be the same help them in Jesus name I pray the people of God say amen Amen. Listen, we don't want to let this opportunity go by. Where's the praise team? If y'all come on. I want to give those who would like to give their life to Christ. You want to make a conscious decision today and give your life to Christ. Maybe you haven't said yes to him. Maybe you don't know him as Lord. I want to give you this opportunity to come down. Let me pray with you. Let me lead you to Christ you've heard the gospel today now it's up to you to make a conscious decision I know you say well I'm going to wait till next Sunday I'm going to go to my church Sunday may come tomorrow may not come I pray again you make a conscious decision that today I'm going to believe forward. Hallelujah. Bless you, my sister. I'm coming down to you in just a minute. Listen, I just want you to believe forward. Believe forward. There are others. You need to give your life to him. You need to get it right with him. This is your opportunity. 
Listen, we all had to walk down an aisle at some point to give our life to Christ. Amen, my sisters. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, I want you to know again that God, He knows already of all about you. And He's already forgiven you. He's already healed you. He's already delivered. I just need you to say yes today. He just needs you to say yes today. Yeah, we serve a great God. How great. He's so great that he, he loves you. And he looks beyond your faults. And he sees your name. Listen, listen. door is open. Come now. Come now. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Come on, stand with me. Just sing with the praise team. One more, one, one round. How great.
Listen, listen. That's why we came to lift up Christ. You don't know who's going to get saved, where they're going to get saved. We 
thank God again for these six who have come to become members of Riverview Community Church. Five who are coming by Christian experience already and one who wants to get baptized. Hallelujah. Y'all know I want to sing. I'm not going to mess it up. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Well, God, we thank you again for what we've experienced. And we thank you again for this worship service. And we ask you right now, God, again to... Allow the same spirit to continue, God. Help us, God, as we fellowship with each other, love on each other, God. I pray right now, God, that whatever the needs are again in this neighborhood, God, not just out here today, but in this neighborhood, God, that you would meet every need. Use us all for your glory, we pray. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, it's just beginning. Amen. We've got artists that are coming to celebrate with us and to worship with us today. So please don't go anywhere. You've got some live music. We've got some games, some fun. Again, let's continue to fellowship and have a good time. Amen. I'm sorry. I got one more thing to do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Before we do that, listen. The Bible says that whenever we come before God, we should bring a gift. I'm not telling you what to give. If you don't have anything to give, come see me. I'll give you something to give. But remember, God loves a cheerful giver. So those again who are members, you know what your responsibility is, and that is to give your tithe or give your offering. Listen, if you're giving via Cash App, you can go to dollar sign RCC The View, dollar sign RCC The View, dollar sign RCC The View. Or if you give an old fashioned way, we got Brother Harvey and Sister Diane up here. Listen, you can bring it and put it in the, in the bucket. Again, we believe, we believe, we believe that giving is God's way of caring for his church. We're not going to beg. We're not going to say, give me all $100 folks coming this line up. We're not doing none of that. We simply believe that God will take care of you. Listen, those who have joined today, don't you get too far away because I still want to talk to you and love on you. So everybody's standing, wherever you are in the back, then does everybody, whoever, everybody who got a gift want to give. Listen, we invite you to come now and give your gift. God, we pray now again that you bless those who are giving. Whatever the gift that they're bringing, God, I pray that you, you bless it in such a way that their household will never be lacking. Don't let them give today, God, and they not have enough. I believe, God, that you're going to bless them beyond measure thank you again for your faithfulness thank you for the jobs the resources that you've given us and we thank you again that we have this wonderful opportunity just to share in your ministry bless it now we pray in Jesus name amen amen that's right God bless you God bless you God bless you God bless you